Aloha, and thanks for listening to the Why Hypnosis Podcast, promoting quality hypnosis and NLP education on the islands of Hawaii, where I interview the top hypnotists, hypnotherapists, and NLP practitioners in the world so that you can learn their secrets to create positive changes in your life and the lives of others. You can subscribe to the Hawaii Hypnosis Newsletter at www.hawaiihypnosis.org. You will receive subscriber-only content such as free contests, articles to help you learn hypnosis and NLP, updates on upcoming hypnosis slash NLP trainings in Hawaii, plus an exclusive hypnosis audio that is only available to the newsletter subscribers. Thanks for listening. So, uh, Steve, I just want to start off by think- saying thank you very much for taking the time to allow me to um, interview you about your knowledge of marketing. I'm looking forward to see you, to seeing what we can um, what we can glean from your knowledge. Now, if you want to give a brief description of who you are and um, what it is that you do. Well, I'm a hypnotherapist. I live in Nashville, Tennessee, and I've been in uh, professional practice here for about eight years now. I'm also a master trainer for the International Association of Counselors and Therapists. Uh, I'm a licensed trainer of conversational hypnosis. Uh, that's uh, Igor Lidovsky's protocol. I've, um, yeah, I've, I've been through a lot of different trainings and been through a lot of ups and downs in this business. And uh, going through the downs taught me a lot of things that uh, hopefully I can pass along to people tonight, so they don't have to go through the same things that I did. Awesome! I'm glad, I'm glad I got you on the uh, on the call. Now, I'm going to start uh, rifling through some of these questions that people have. Most of these questions, uh, there's a couple questions that really don't fit today, so we can skip past those. One person, for example, wants to know, what are you going to suggest that other marketing experts ha- haven't already said? What am I going to suggest that other marketing experts haven't? Well, you know, I'm not sure that I'm going to suggest anything that other marketing experts haven't because... You know, I'm uh, I'm an expert in building the business that I've built, and I've done that by taking information from a lot of different marketers. And uh, you know, is this going to be some uh, something that's going to be different than you're going to find in other places? Probably not, but you're going to have to look in a lot of different places to find this stuff. And you know, it, it's it's taking what I've learned over the past several years and put it together in any kind of my own way. That uh, that makes it unique to me. So you know, you can go study Dan Kennedy. You can study Frank Kern. You can study Ryan Dice. You know, you can go study uh, Cliff Me, who's uh, Eagle Lee Dahosky's marketing guy. And you know, a lot of the principles and the things that I'm going to be talking about tonight are really are pretty common across the board. So what do I have unique to offer? Just my perspective on it. <clears throat> yeah, that's the thing. I think with a lot of our marketers, there's um. There's knowledge you can get from every from every marketer. Sometimes you learn uh, sure. what what to do, and sometimes you learn what not to do. Well, and you can pick up different marketing techniques and tips from places outside of marketing as well. If you're open to you know learning and, and seeing uh, different possibilities, you know I suggest that even in hypnosis is that you go out and you study more and more things beyond the field that you're in. Because you may find that uh, when your unconscious really starts to do the work that it should, then you'll you'll find that uh, you come up with some interesting things. Because again, you're coming at it from your own perspective and through your own experience. A lot of people want to know how to start a practice with little to no money available. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's a great question and a great thing to know. Uh, and, and you know, I've done that because. Well, let me, let me kind of tell you my story and, and how I ended up here, uh, so everybody has an idea and understanding that you know you can come from nothing and create a really successful practice. Uh, about twelve and a half years ago, I quit smoking with hypnosis, and honestly, back then I didn't even think it was it was even going to help me. I just I was a guinea pig for a guy and. Uh, those people that, uh, if any of my students are on this call right now, they, they've heard this story before. But I was a guinea pig for a guy. I was really surprised that I even walked away from the session and didn't smoke anymore. And it really kind of set me on a path of, of discovery. And through some coincidences that happened or some synchronicities, depending depends on who you're talking to, uh, I kind of fell into hypnosis. 
and it just kind of fell into me and started out just kind of playing around with friends doing you know some of the silly stuff like we did out in Long Beach and uh, you know we had a pretty good time out there huh yeah, yeah uh, no, you, you can explain it it was, it was real <laughs> funny at my expense <laughs> Uh, well, I, I, again, Antonio, like you said, I'm a little bit mischievous. I like to have a lot of fun. And I like to play around with people. And one thing I did was I dropped Antonio into a pretty deep trance while we were out there and suggested to him that every time that I say the word sleep that he would drop back into that deep trance. And I did that at various times in random places and random occasions throughout the rest of the week and even wrote sleep on a piece of paper that I showed to him. Actually, I think, you, did you see me writing it or did I just show it to you the first time? You just, I went up to shake your hand during a break. I was like, hey, how's it going? Oh, boy. Yeah, that was it. And, and, and the fact that you had seen that and know that, that that handwriting was associated with me, I was able to pass that piece of paper around so other people could use it and do the same thing to you. Uh, while I watched in the distance, which was quite fun. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, but like I said, I started out just kind of doing mischievous things, just kind of playing with friends, uh, learning some of the street hypnosis and just some of the silly stuff. But I, I realized that there was much more power behind it than than I thought I had back then. So I started um, helping people change themselves in different ways. And as I discovered that there was more power to it than I really understood in the beginning, I decided that there was, I, I needed to learn more. So I started immersing myself in, in trainings and products and everything I could get my hands on, every book I could find, and <clears throat> decided I was going to start a professional practice. Now, at the time, I was living in Murray, Kentucky. And if anybody knows about Murray, Kentucky, I'm really quite surprised. Um, but I was in a town of 17,000 people. And I knew there that what I was doing was not going to work. What I had to do at that point was get out of Murray. And I decided to move to Nashville. And I moved here. I knew one person in Nashville. I had less money to my name than I have in my pocket right now. And uh, the only thing I had was a dream. So the people that want to know how to start a practice on nothing, I can definitely teach you how to do that, and hopefully you can get past some of the crap that I had to overcome uh, to uh, to get where I am right now. But anyway, I moved here. I didn't know anybody in Nashville, and uh, I was for quite a while. I was pretty hungry, and uh, I had to figure out how to build a practice because the only thing I wanted to do when I moved here was just hypnotize people. I figured if I got my certification and called myself a hypnotist, people would start beating my door down. And the next thing I know, I'd have all kinds of money and everything would be great. And it didn't work out to be like that in the beginning. It was it was really quite a challenge in the beginning. As, as any business is, you know, it takes time. And there's always a learning curve to everything that you do. But yeah, I'm going to give you some tips tonight on some, some things that, that have helped me over the past few years uh, to help me build... Uh, you know, a strong base clientele, as well as ways of getting new clients pretty quickly and, and keep them coming in. So and I think that's kind of what everybody wants to know. <clears throat> Did you have any questions? I, you're, you're about to say something there. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, that's right. You can you can actually see me. I forgot. Um, yeah, when you're talking about the three tips, I know there's a, a Randy um, Booker, if I'm pronouncing your, your uh, name wrong. Sorry. I know he was interested in what are what are your top three methods to increase business are. Top three methods to increase business. Uh, <clears throat> I think it, it really depends on where you are and the clientele you want to build up. And I think that's where you should always start is figure out who the clients are that you want to work with. You know, do you want to work with everybody? Do you want to work with a specific demographic? Uh, you know, because there are people out there that want to do past life regression work. There are people out there that just want to do smoking, people that want to do weight loss. You know, there are people out there that, uh, you know, I've got a friend who's a, a bulimia expert. You know, there's, I, I would suggest, first off, is, is finding your niche and deciding what you want to work with and who you want to work with. Uh, because, it, you know, something that I did is that. <laughs> um, that's interesting. I don't know if anybody else can hear that or not. <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh, uh, it's. It sounds like a bullfrog. 
Oh, it's the motorcycle in the background. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> it's the bullfrog the motorcycle. The bullfrog. It's the way it sounds over Skype. Um, now, the first thing I would do is, is is find your demographic, decide who you want to work with, and then and then start to look at ways to get your face in front of them, get your name in front of them, uh, decide how you want to meet them. You know, if you're looking for, uh, you know, one, one thing I did a few years ago was the people I want to work with are people that have enough money to pay me, you know, because that's pretty important. Uh, to me anyway. Some people like to do free work. It's not really, you know, my thing. I've spent enough time doing free work. It's time to get paid now. Uh, so I, I wanted to go out and find people that could afford to pay me. And where I've met people in the past is going to, like, fundraisers, go to United Way, go to art galleries and show openings, uh, go to uh, public events where your clientele is going to be hanging out. You know, if you want to get into past life regressions and, and doing the, the metaphysical side of the work, then, then go to one of the psychic fairs or something. You don't have to rent a booth. Just go meet people. Just go out and start networking. Start getting your name out there and letting people know that you're there. I mean, you can go to, uh, what is it, Vista Print. You can get 250 cards for nothing. And, uh, you know, go out and start handing them out and just letting people know that you're there in the beginning. You know, business cards are a cheap way to get your name out there very quickly. And, you know, the one thing I wouldn't recommend is going out and just becoming a pitch fest as soon as you, you walk in front of somebody. You know, hey, I'm, I'm Steve and I'm a hypnotist. Here's my card. Call me so I can help you, you know, get that fat off your butt. Um, yeah, it, they, might, they might not in like conversation. that. <laughs> they don't really. I've tried. Um, but, you know, go out and... and Figure out where your demographic is hanging out, where they're spending their time, where their eyes are going. You know, if, if you're looking for a specific demographic and they, they, you think you're going to watch a lot of television, figure out a way to get on TV. If, uh, you know, you're looking for parents, look for, look for kids' magazines and parenting magazines in your area. Uh, a great way to get your name out there is uh, to write articles, write editorials. Uh, find magazines in your area and newspapers, you know, like the smaller ones that, uh, that you know, they, they may not pay you anything, but you can get your name out there and start putting some articles out. But fundraisers are a great way, uh, again, depending on the clientele that you're looking for. But it's just a great way to get out there just to mingle with some people, get to meet some people. Don't go out there and be so in your face because that really scares people off, especially as hypnotists. Uh, because there's, uh, you know, honestly, there's some odd people in this industry. I hope none of them are listening to this call right now. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, there's some interesting folks that get drawn to this industry. And we overall have gained, you know, kind of a, kind of a stigma about us in certain areas of the country. In Nashville, it's definitely true here. Uh, out in California, you know, it's, it's less of a problem out there. But there's still stigma attached to it. And, you know, presenting yourself in a way that's professional, uh, knowledgeable, is, uh, is really what you need to do. And, and having the skills to, to, you know, show up when people show up to you, too, I think is really important. Because if you have the skills, you're going to get referrals without even having to ask for them. I would ask for them anyway, because you should. Um, you know, one thing I do with my clients is uh, on their way out the door, I'll give them 10 business cards and say, look, when you're happy with this tomorrow, and I pre-frame it that you're going to be happy with that session by tomorrow, uh, or even when you walk out the door, when you're happy with this session, you know, give these cards to your friends and let them know that there's somebody here that can help them change some things in their life too. And if for some reason you're not happy, well, you've got my phone number right there 10 times. <laughs> You know, so that also gives your clients a reassurance that you're there to help them, and they're going to be more likely to go out and hand out those business cards. That's a brilliant idea right there. But, you know, business cards are a cheap way to get your name out there. Uh, you know, again, depending on what kind of, what kind of uh, clientele you're looking for, you can create any kind of business cards you want. On December 7th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Igor Letohovsky be having a free teleseminar and during this teleseminar one lucky person will win a free 
64 gigabyte iPad 2 fully loaded with over $4,000 in hypnosis training materials. To register for the teleseminar, go to bit.ly forward slash hypnosis contest. What have you found is the best way to encourage referrals from the dentists, chiropractors, doctors, etc.? Meet them. Uh, give them a free session. Introduce them to what you do. Uh, because it's when somebody walks away from your office and they feel good about working with you, they're going to send people to you. And again, that, that goes back to bringing the skills to the table. You know, if you don't have them, you better go find them. Uh, and there's a lot of, you know, there's some pretty bad hypnosis trainings out there. I've been to several of them. You know, so just make sure that you have the skills that people come in for. If you're, you know, if you're, they're coming in to quit smoking, make sure you know what you're doing. You know, find ways of, of learning everything you can about quitting smoking. You know, immerse yourself in it. Know everything about it. When somebody walks in and asks you a question, the answer should be right there. Just fly out of your mouth. Uh, become an expert in the field that you want to work in. And, and then get out there and just show people that you have the goods. But, you know, just easiest way, again, get those business cards. Go out, meet people. I, I, you can make phone calls, but I think it's much more powerful to walk into somebody's office and, you know, just say, hey, my name is, this is what I'm doing, and I'd like to, you know, have a few minutes of your time so we can talk about it and see when I can set up a time for you to come into my office so I can give you a sample of what I do. It's not going to cost you anything. I just want you to understand that I have the skills that, that your clients need too because I can do things that you can't and you can do things that I can't and you know we might as well start a joint venture here where everybody benefits in the end yeah there are plenty of uh, joint ventures in the uh, in the personal development fields sure yeah massage therapists chiropractors you know uh, open-minded doctors and again that depends on where you are in the country uh, it's harder to find an open-minded doctor here in Nashville than it would be, again, like in California. Uh, not that they're not here. Trust me, I've got uh, there are plenty of them here. Dentists are a great, great place to go uh, if you're if you're working with pain management, you know, or, or anxieties, you know, things like that. You know, again, think about go back and decide who you want to work with. Who is your clientele? Who, who is your, your perfect client? If they walk in the door right now, who is your perfect client? And, you know, sketch them out. Draw out who they are. Draw a description. Write out a description of who they are. Uh, and, and as you're starting to decide how you're going to market yourself, have that avatar <clears throat> right there in front of you. You know, when you're doing any kind of writing, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about emails and articles here in a few minutes, but... Um, you know, market to that person. <clears throat> Send that person, write everything to that person. You know, you, you brought up a really good point about um, about the, uh, the the certain niche. And something that um, I've been thinking about is how, since I'm in Hawaii, it's a, it's we're like 90% tourism here. I book a lot of people for like helicopter, for my job I book people for like helicopter rides, plane rides, and I know there's a lot of people that um, they can't go because their, their significant other is terrified of going. How would you sure. suggest that I target uh, the, the tourists that are scared of flying? Um, yeah, just introduce yourself. Hey, look, you know, my, my name's Antonio, I'm a hypnotist and I help people with this every day. Okay, one thing I was that's, thinking about. That's exactly, I'm that's sorry, exactly the way I would introduce myself. Well, I, I wouldn't say Antonio. I would say Steve, but, yeah. uh, you know, you get the idea. <laughs> yeah, I was saying it might be a little bit harder considering people here usually hear anywhere from, like, two days to seven days, so people are go, 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 constantly moving. Right. Well, uh, you know, offer some free sessions. I'll tell you what, let, spend, spend 20 minutes with me. If after this 20 minutes you don't feel like you can go in that helicopter, then don't pay me. If nothing else, you're, you're getting great, uh, great practice. You're figuring out what does and doesn't work. And what does work, you're going to get paid on. 
true. You know, so, you know, put yourself out there. Uh, I, I, I'm not a huge fan of, you know, using some of this stuff, depending on where you go in public. Uh, if you're going out to do some street hypnosis, and that's your intention of doing it, you know, going out and actually doing that. But, you know, you can do, uh, do demonstrations in public. Uh, do uh, you know some of the uh, some of the like the, you know the, the fingers pulling together and you know um, uh, the, the glue around your hands and you know all, all those things that, that show uh, suggestibility. You know you can offer some of those things out in public just to show people that the power of their mind and, and what they can do with it. Uh, but you know play around with it, have fun with this stuff, and I think that's that's where where people are getting lost in it. They, they want to be stuck in, in certain uh, you know, certain parameters. But go out and have some fun. That's how I built my whole business in the beginning, was just going out and having fun. I'd go out and have a beer and stick people to bars and then, you know, and then book obsessions to quit smoking. Uh, you know, it really, again, it depends on the clientele you're looking for. <coughs> yeah, definitely. That's one thing. I'm going to skill. Yeah, that's one thing I'm going to do is um, at one of the local uh, art nights out here, I've been doing a lot of street hypnosis there. I'm just handing out business mm -hmm. cards. Right. So you're already doing it for free. One, I say, look, let me do this for you. If it doesn't work, don't pay me. You haven't um, lost anything, and, and if they're happy with it, you gain money. And I actually uh, interviewed um, somebody recently, Jorgen uh, Rasmussen. He built a, an impossible practice. He basically said if he didn't, he knows that if he didn't get change for people, he didn't eat. So he basically, he, he said that yeah. ended up making him really good at what he did. Right. Yeah, you learn what works and what doesn't. You know, and, and what doesn't work is fine because you gain something from it and you move on and you work with somebody else. You know, uh, again, come with the skills, come with the confidence. And you'll be amazed what you'll do and the referrals that you'll get out of that. Because when people see confidence within you, you know, I had a guy come in a few weeks ago, actually right before I left for Mexico, and he came in to quit smoking. We're talking, he goes, man, I don't know what it is about you, but I just know I'm going to quit smoking because you're so damn confident. <laughs> and yeah, I was. It definitely helps. It does help. It's, uh, you, you know, because you have to show them that you know exactly what you're doing. But we're not here to talk about skills. You want to talk about skills, I've got a training coming up. Uh, and maybe we'll do another webinar about that later. But, uh, you know, again, getting out and figuring out who your clientele is, who the people are that you want to work with, and go out and find them. Put yourself in front of them. Introduce yourself to them. And uh, hand out those business cards. Yeah, Steve, um... One thing that I've actually had a couple people ask me was about, you know, not everybody has a private practice right now. Some people mm -hmm. are wondering what kind of recommendations you have for people that make house calls or even people that do, I guess, sessions via Skype. Recommendations as far as and I guess up, like, uh, uh, maybe ways to market marketing. Themselves. Okay. Uh, well, again, go out and start to meet people. Uh, you know, go out and talk to doctors and because people go places. The people are going to leave their homes at some point, even if you're working with them at their home. So figure out who, where they're, where those people are going. Uh, again, I'm going to go st straight back to what I said a minute ago. Figure out who your clientele is and figure out where they're going. Get out and introduce yourself. Meet people. Put up flyers. Uh, you know, flyers are a cheap way of putting your name out there. Go to grocery stores, health food stores, bookstores. Uh, I had a friend who used to go into uh, like a Borders bookstore, and he'd go back and find books on stop smoking and weight loss, and he would put his business card in every one of the books because he knew that's where the eyeballs were going to go. I thought about doing that like at the local thing. bookstore. Yeah, I thought about that at the local bookstore. <laughs> Uh, it works out for a while until they catch on to what you're doing. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm the only they. This bookstore holds hypnosis books for me, so they would know exactly who did it. Right, right, right. Um, but yeah, figure out where you're, where those people are going, and who you want to work with. 
join clubs, get on forums online if they're in your local area. Join meetup groups. Meetup groups are a great way to get out and meet people. You know, uh, if if you're into you know, if you're into crocheting, join a crochet group and get in with those people, and you know, just put your name out there. Just let them know what you do when you get there. I joined a kayaking group here in Nashville, and ended up with six clients out of it. You know, just because I was out doing something I really enjoyed doing. And you probably weren't so much but, out there to, to actual pitch people. No, I, well, that's not the reason I went out. But, you know, the thing is, once people find out that you're a hypnotist, people are like, what? <laughs> you know, they want to know what's going on and what you have to offer and what you can do, either that or they're turned off and they move away from you. And that's fine because that just that cuts, you know, the bull that you have to throw out there. Uh, and you, you find the people that gravitate towards you are the ones that are interested in working with you anyway. But, you know, just go out and have fun, do some stuff that you enjoy doing, uh, figure out where those people are going to enjoy the stuff that they do, and put yourself in those places. I had somebody ask me a question. He said, how do you ethically define the line between clients coming back repeatedly after you have, quote-unquote, fixed them and treating them as, quote-unquote, cash cows to be milked? <laughs> well, um, number one, I don't know that we're ever fixing anybody because people have more problems than they're gonna, you know, we could ever stop. Uh, if, if they quit smoking, I wouldn't tell them to come back for twelve sessions uh, because that is highly unethical, and all you're doing is stealing their money. But you know, one thing that that I would definitely recommend for everybody is is get yourself an email list set up. Uh, I use AWeber. And get your people set up so that all the clients that come in to see you get opted into an email list. Uh, set up a website. If you don't have one, I would highly recommend everybody set up a website. And figure out a way using, you know, you can use AWeber, Constant Contact, Eye Contact. Uh, you can use Inf Infusionsoft if you want to spend that much money. Uh, I don't think it's necessary for a small business. I've been using AWeber for several years now, and it's, it's, it's really all I need for, for my private practice. But you get people on an email list, and you set up an autoresponder, and what that does, it sends out emails on a, on a regular basis so that, you know, somebody may come in to quit smoking, but they're now on your list. And a week later, they get an email about how hypnosis can help with weight loss. And they go, oh, wait a minute, you know, my butt is too big. Maybe I should go see him about that. And then a week later, they get an email about a fear of flying. Oh, well, you know what? I know Bill. Bill's got a fear of flying. Maybe I should tell him about this. You know, so you start putting yourself out there and start representing the other things that you can work with. So that way you're, you know, because I had a guy come in not too long ago who, who had been to see somebody to, for a fear of flying, and he saw her 14 times. Jeez. I was actually quite appalled uh, because of somebody who I really trusted. And, uh, but he saw her 14 times, and he asked me how many sessions it was going to take. I'm like, one or two? Uh he said, well, man, if you can do this in one or two sessions, I've got this, 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 and that I need to work on. I'm like, fantastic, come on in. You know, again, you, you come at, you, you bring the skills to the table, and people are going to come back to get the work that's really benefiting their lives in, in, in some other way. Because if somebody quits smoking and, they, and you have a conversation with them about how all the patterns and the programs in their life have been holding them back from doing everything else they want to do and that you can help them with that as well, then you're not using them as a cash cow. You're actually benefiting them. And, you know, don't ever underestimate what somebody else can, has, to, has to give you. You know, uh, in the beginning, I was, I was a little afraid of overcharging somebody. And, you know, the stuff that we're doing, the work that we're offering, changes people's lives in dramatic ways. So make sure you're charging what you're worth as well. And, of course, there's, there's also a psychological benefit to that, too, uh, because the more you charge, the more people believe that there's, there's real, well, there's a perceived value to it, and you have to bring the value with it, uh, or, you know, you're going to end up without any clients at all. 
but you know, figure out who it is you want to work with. Go out, find them. Uh, do good work with them, and then ask them to come back and bring referrals with them. I'm from the country. It's pretty cut and dry here. <laughs> yeah, well, our, po- our our population here is, um, which is going to be easy for me to um, get a practice going. We've only got like 60,000 yeah. people, so. But the funny thing is, is um, three of the hypnotists that were at that training that I met Steve at, three of them are, uh, that live here, so. Right. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Out of seven, about 60,000 people, we had three people at the training, which is kind of unheard of. Yeah, but you have the uh, you have the tourist population that moves through there. Exactly. You know, figure out ways of putting figure out ways of putting yourself into tourist magazines and then you know things that people are going to pick up. Uh, you know, put get your name out to all the concierges in the in the area, the hotels. You know, because again, people are going to come fly come, coming in there with the fear of flying, and you know they're going to miss out on a lot of different opportunities that they could get out, uh, or fear of you know the water, uh, whatever it is. You know, but make sure that uh, that people know who you are and put yourself out there as the guy that does this. You know, That's... become become shameless self promoters. Oh, I'm good at that. <laughs> I'm pretty good at that. Well, it's now... what it takes in the beginning, and then and then after that, after a while, you don't have to do it. You know, right now I, I do. I was looking at my schedule today. I have 28 sessions this week. Uh, and, and I work Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then a half day on Saturday. So I have Sunday, Monday, and a half day Saturday off. And I'm doing about 28 sessions a week. And I'm currently spending, I think my last uh, Google AdWords bill uh, was $123. So you know, next I, I'm nothing. Not, yeah, exactly. You know, and it, it's just because over the over the past few years, I, I put my name out there, and people come searching for me now because they've heard about the work. So you know, again, you can go out and you can have the best marketing there is in the world. You could have, you know, some. You could have Dan Kennedy do your marketing. And it's going to bring you some clients. And I don't know if anybody on here knows who Dan Kennedy is, uh, but he's, he's one of the top marketers in the world. You know, you can go out there and you can have the top marketer in the world doing marketing for you, but unless you're coming to the work with the work, you know, again, having the skills, uh, then you're not going to get any referrals in the end anyway. So... But referrals and keeping a client is so much easier than going out and finding new clients. So much easier. Because once they come in and they understand that you know what you're doing, then they're going to want to come back for other things. And they're going to send their friends back for other things. You know, Steve, one thing you just reminded me about uh, keeping a client. You were talking about the um, uh, the newsletter uh, providers. Yeah. It, I'm not sure if you've yep. ever used uh, I've, if you've ever used Mailchimp. I um I personally love Mailchimp. It's just, I think you can have up to two thousand subscribers for free, and you send out yeah. you can send up like twelve thousand emails a month. So I mean, if you're not doing that much business now, you can go to Mailchimp.com and get a forever free uh yep. free accounts. I mean, it's great if you're just if you're just doing small like small kind of emails. It's not that bad at all. Right. Yeah, I've never used Mailchimp. I know people that have, and uh, yeah, they've had good good luck out of it. Um, you know, especially if you're coming into this with no budget at all. <clears throat> but it, it, even if you're coming in with no budget at all, I would fight tooth and nail to put up a website. You know, even if it's just a couple of pages about yourself, but do one that that you know really represents who you are. Uh, something that represents the work. Uh, because there's some really bad websites out there too. Uh, there's some people here in my area that have just, <laughs> you know, websites that look like it was put together by a third grader. <clears throat> and then people go to my website, and, and I know they're going to come see me because, well, you can go check it out. You guys, it, it's NashvilleHypnosis.com, uh, and then you can see my website and see how things how I put things together. You know, uh, ask for testimonials. Testimonials speak volumes. 
Oh yeah. So, and the best way. To, what's that? No, I was gonna say yeah. Testimonials definitely, definitely do help. Yeah, I think you know if you go to my site right now, I think there's about 95 testimonials on there. Uh, simply because I ask. You know, there's nothing unethical about it because what you're doing is, is you know, when, when people come in and experience something, you know, I, it doesn't matter if you're the greatest hypnotist in the world. You can stand on the mountaintop and scream that to, you know, the top of your lungs. But it's so much easier to get, have somebody else say, you know what, this guy did this for me. And when people see several of those, they realize that there's really something going on and that you do have something to offer. Now, Steve, um, in the same in the same veins of uh, websites, which I know a bunch of people were sending in questions about websites, like should we have a website? And I'm going to flat out say, <laughs> yes, you need a website. And yes, don't do what I did. Don't just haphazardly go on the website. I would sit down with some paper, plan it out, plan what pages you want to have. Because I'm going through a bunch of um, a bunch of errors through uh, uh, Google Webmasters. Just take. I mean, if you're not good with websites, go find somebody that's good with websites and be a nice quality yeah, website. Yeah. Now, yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, don't waste your time because you're going to end up spending more time uh, trying to do something that is subpar than, you know, you're just going to end up wasting your time and your money because think about how valuable your time is. And if you're charging $100, $200 an hour, what's it worth? Yeah, and if you... um. If you went through some of the troubles I have for my my current website, hawaiihypnosis.org, and my the other one I have um, that I'm working on, you'd probably want to throw yeah. your computer. I was at certain times I wanted to <laughs> chuck my laptop across the room. What's the number one advice you can give to drive more traffic to your website? Uh, number one, well... Gosh, I don't know, because there's a lot of different ways that I drive traffic into my site. Well, number one, you have to you have to capture email addresses. And, you know, there's several different ways that you can do that. You can set up squeeze pages. You can have a website set up. Uh, you know, a good way of getting uh, emails is offering something for free. You know, put together a, uh, <clears throat> like a free uh, relaxation audio or something. You know, it's not that hard to do. Just find you some, some soothing music in the background and do a session that you already do, uh, you know, in front of a microphone. Poof, you've got a product. You give it away. And, you know, you can set it up so you sign up for my newsletter and, and get a free relaxation audio. It's that simple. People love free stuff. So, and, and you know, if, if people are really interested in this, I'm setting up a coaching program that I'm going to walk everybody from beginning to end on this. But uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> but you, you go in and you set up an autoresponder campaign where you have uh, a welcome email. So when they sign up for your newsletter, automatically they're, they get an email, welcome, thanks for joining, you know, appreciate uh, your, your eyes and, you know, your, your interest in what I'm doing. Uh, I've got some great stuff coming up for you. Keep an eye on your inbox and make sure that you, you put me on your safe list so I don't end up going to your spam box. You know, um, Steve, one thing, and, here, real quick, one thing I want to interject about the autoresponders, for my, um, my newsletter at hawaiihypnosis.org, which, by the way, uh, here's a shameless plug. If you're not on it, get on the newsletter. You get a bunch of free uh, uh, hypnosis training audios. Anyhow, one of my things I do, which I think it helps to build a relationship, is... I ask people to, rep I send out, after people subscribe, I send an email and ask them like three questions like, are they having any struggles learning hypnosis or NLP, et cetera. Ask them like three questions. I'm like, hey, do me a favor and reply to this email. So I have people replying with me so I can, it starts to build a relationship with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one I found has definitely right. helped uh, the newsletter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, people love questions, uh, surveys, polls, uh, you know, which one are you more interested in, this or this? Uh, ask them questions that they can interact with. Um, but, you know, set up an autoresponder campaign so that once they get signed up to it, for the next six, seven, eight, nine weeks, they get, a, they get an email every week or two or three a week if you can. 
uh, just to stay in front of them. And again, you know, don't, don't make them all pitch fast. They shouldn't all be, you know, trying to get them to come in the door. Give them some free information. Uh, build a relationship with them because, I mean, really, that's what everybody likes, isn't it? People like to be in relationships. So if you build a good relationship with them and become their friend through email, then they're more likely to come back to you. Yeah, become their friend. I mean, write in a friendly style, too. Throw away all the uh, <laughs> all the things that you learned in school uh, about writing and just write like you talk. And, and people are going to respond to that. You know, the people that are drawn to you are going to be drawn to you anyway. Uh, I use Facebook a lot. Uh, you know, spend some time when I'm doing some social media. Um, and I've, I've developed quite a following, you know, international following on Facebook now. And that's, that's given me Skype sessions. Uh, I've got a bunch of people that I've picked up here locally. Uh, but I've done sessions <clears throat> with clients worldwide simply because of Facebook. What's giving you the best return, I guess, for your investment? Uh, well, as far as actually getting the most amount of traffic that I've done is actually television. And uh, you, there, there are ways that you can get in and, and actually get on TV for free. And, and, you know, and it's actually, if you go to my website right now, nationalhypnosis.com, you'll see that there's a, there's a video on there that I did. And basically what we did for that, <clears throat> this was on one of, it was one of the midday shows on the station here, here in Nashville. And what we did was offered them, uh, gosh, I can't remember what it was. Uh, I think they wanted like $1,500 to put, put on uh, the interview plus some advertising on their website. And what I did was I gave them enough sessions to pay for that. They actually sold the sessions through their through the television station that paid for the advertising. So the advertising didn't cost me anything more than some time. And just doing one interview on TV drove my business for three and a half months. Oh, that's awesome! You know, so because you know, it's the oh my god, he's on TV kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's just the, it's the whole psychology behind it. But yeah, you know, I spent I spent about twenty to twenty five hours uh, of my time giving away sessions that basically booked my calendar for three and a half months, and I still get business from that interview. You know, that's why it's on the website. People go there, they look at it, they're like, well, he's on TV, so he must be okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, authority, yeah, so, authority. Well, yeah, exactly. You know, as long as you're not on cops, then you're doing okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, <laughs> If you've got a mug, if you got a mug yep. shot, don't put that on your website. Yeah, uh, but you you won't run out of clientele. <laughs> Captive clientele. Uh, yeah. Now, what are um? I know we have all kinds of different um, um different kind of clientele. What have you found to be the ideal, um, the ideal client type? I'm sorry. What are, what have you found out to be the ideal related business types that are good uh, marketing targets, such as uh, women's yoga festivals, uh, uh, yeah, health fairs, you know, etc. You should always go there. <laughs> um, again, it really depends on the clientele you're looking for. Uh, you know, I've uh, I, I've worked with a lot of smokers, so what I've done in the past is actually just go down to some of the street festivals, and I'll see people that are smoking, and sometimes you'll see people that have kind of this, you know, scowled look on their face while they're taking a hit off a cigarette, and you realize they probably don't want to smoke anymore. Hand them a card. Uh, <clears throat> but, you know, connecting with people that, that have the basic same clientele that you do, uh, I've partnered with a health food store here in Nashville because, you know, I'm looking for people that are already healthy and wanting to improve themselves even more. Uh, I've worked with a lot of smokers, but I'm kind of done with smokers. Um, so if anybody's looking for a smoking business, you can move to Nashville right now and you'll never run out of clients. 
<coughs> I'm just tired of smoking them, to be honest with you. You're tired, tired of smelling them. In this next question, I take it you could probably shed some light onto it. Somebody okay. wants to know about your appearance. Um, if having long hair affects the number of clients, and if they cut their hair, if they could get away, or if they could um, possibly increase their client base. You know, I used to have uh, really short hair. Now I have pretty long hair, and um, it, it doesn't it hasn't changed anything for me. <clears throat> I uh, I think really as long as you come in with confidence and with an air that you know what you're doing, there's you shouldn't have a problem. You know, obviously, you know, I, I'm sure that me having long hair has probably turned off a few people. I'm okay with that. It doesn't matter. My, my practice stays full anyway. Um, again, it depends on the clientele you want to work with. You know, the people that are turned off by long hair, not necessarily the clients that I'm looking for. You know, if I was looking for, because we, uh, we have Fort Campbell just 45 minutes away from me. So I've got a military base just right up the road. And if that was the clientele I was looking for, I would, I'd still have really short hair. But it's not necessarily the people I'm looking for. So, you know, I think, the, uh, just be you. Just be who you are. Because if you're being who you are, you're going you're gonna to bring the clientele in that you want to work with anyway. Now, I have somebody that's wondering, they're wondering about when you start off with little to no experience, how much they should charge if they should use a go for a reduce rate because they don't seem they don't seem that it would be I guess fair or wise to be charging two hundred plus dollars an hour. Right. Well, uh, you know, it depends on your your skills and uh, your experience. You know, if uh, you can always give away sessions to build up experience. You know, if you're not making any money at it, then why not get experience from it anyway and give away a few free 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 a few free sessions along the way. Uh, or do sessions for donations. Uh, but, but building up your experiences is the best way to raise your rates. You know, I don't mind charging $200 an hour. I don't mind charging $300 to quit smoking. It doesn't bother me because I know that what I'm delivering is, is good work. But years ago, I was charging 60 bucks an hour because I didn't have the confidence in myself. And I, I think the perceived value of that actually affects the session as well. Because if you're charging 60 bucks an hour, the person coming to see you is not going to put nearly as much value on it as somebody who's paying, you know, $300 an hour. And they're going to come at it <clears throat> with an attitude of, of more expectation out of, of the experience. So that pre-frame, before they even come into the office, is going to give them more benefit than you charging 60 bucks an hour. But again, bring the skills if you're going to ask for the bills. Very wise. Yeah, definitely that people, the more something is, usually the more people, the more people value it. Sure. You know, and, and <clears throat> if, if you're charging $300, $400 for somebody to quit smoking, then those people that really want to quit are going to come in too. So, you know, they've already set themselves up for success. Most people are not going to come in and spend $300 to challenge you. Somebody might spend 60 bucks and come in and go, okay, make me quit smoking. Somebody spends 300 bucks and they walk in and they go, okay, I'm ready. Yeah, they're pretty, they're all, I would imagine they're almost a smoker before you even do any work with them. I'm sorry, almost, yeah, well, it, almost it, a non-smoker. Yeah, exactly. You know, they've, they've already set their mind in. You know, my, my schedule is typically booked two and a half to three weeks out, uh, sometimes a little more. So they've already had plenty of time to think about it. I've already told them a few things that they can do. You know, just start cutting back on it. Set this as your date. This is the day you're going to quit smoking. When you walk into my office, we're going to take care of this, and it's going to be out of your life forever. So I'm already giving them pre-hypnotic suggestions and starting to pre-frame what's going to happen for them. So by the time they walk into the office, they're pretty close to done. You just have to wave the magic wand over them and say a few nice words. <laughs> How 
how do we market when people are asking if the session is being paid by insurance? How do we market? Well, I don't take insurance, so uh, that's something I don't really mess with. Uh, you know, if somebody wants to try and turn it into their insurance, I'm happy to give them a receipt and they can pass it along. Uh, <coughs> but as far as something being paid by, you know, think about insurance. Um, <laughs> I've got too many friends that are physical therapists and, and, you know, they actually get paid by insurance and they make about 35% of what they would make from those people because insurance just doesn't want to pay. So uh, I'm pretty fortunate overall that in Tennessee we don't take insurance and insurance doesn't pay for hypnosis more or less. Uh, again, there's some, some programs out there that people can submit um, you know, forms to their insurance company and they'll be reimbursed for it. But um, you know, it really depends on what you're working on and how would you market to that. I wouldn't go for that market personally because it's too much paperwork for me. I'm not looking to uh, make my business any more complicated than it is. That's the wonderful thing about this, this, this type of business. It can be as simple as you want it to be. Yeah, no need in making so, things. I hope, I hope that helps. Yeah, no need in making things even more complicated. Not at all. Uh, make, yeah, I keep it as simple as possible. My clients download their paperwork off the website. They fill it out. They have it in their hand when they bring it in here. You know, we don't waste any time filling out paperwork in my office. Uh, they come in. We sit down. We start and get right to it. And uh, you know, learning what they need out of, out of the first few minutes is is crucial. And I don't want to waste time on paperwork when they do come in. Now, if you wanted to just take a couple of minutes to talk about the, the coaching program that you're working on, and then I can hopefully open the line for people to um, ask you additional questions. Sure. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm putting together a program right now to uh, basically help other hypnotists who are just beginning and starting in this business, where we, we, we go from ground up. And, and I teach them how to how to put together their autoresponders, how to get out and network with people, who to network, how to build up their practice, and, and get them up and running. You know, it, it took me about three and a half years to learn what I'm going to teach people in six months. And I wish that I had had somebody there to, to kind of guide me along and you know show me the ropes and show me what I needed to do along the way. I was very fortunate to have run into uh, some incredible marketers who have kind of taken me by the hand and, and shown me uh, exactly what to do uh, to build up my practice. And uh, what I'm going to be doing right now, <clears throat> I'm working on a six-month and a 12-month program uh, where basically we're going to stay with you, you know, hold your hand the entire time and uh, teach you all the marketing skills that I know so that, you know, again, you can go out and you can, you can go research everything that I've researched uh, and glean from it what you can, but it's taken me years to put together the things that I've put together. So, you know, I, I'm cutting through all the crap so you can get right down to the nuts and bolts and, and actually start to build a practice pretty quickly. Um, yeah, and right before this thing started, I threw together a really quick squeeze page. Uh, and if anybody's interested <coughs> in signing up, Honestly, I haven't even put the first email in the autoresponder. I did this literally an hour and a half ago. Uh, but you can go to hypnobizcoaching.com, H-Y-P-N-O-B-I-Z, coaching.com, and sign up, and uh, you'll get your first email tomorrow because, like I said, I haven't written it yet. Uh, but uh, if you're interested, then uh, I'm going to be doing uh, another teleseminar in two weeks from tomorrow. And uh, I'm going to spend about three hours going into some stuff. And if it's something that interests you, I would normally you know, charge quite a bit more than I'm charging for this one. It's only 27 bucks uh, for, for three hours of marketing. And uh, if you, know, you like it from there and decide you want to move in into uh, the coaching program, fantastic. If you don't, fantastic. But uh, you know, it, 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 I really wish somebody had been there to take me by the hand to do this stuff then. So anyway, that's all I'm going to say, hypnobizcoaching.com. I'm going to leave it at that because I'm, I'm, I'm here to teach more about marketing than I am to, uh, to market myself right now. Cool. I just, uh, so you um, just got me to sign up. And um, here, I, actually, I, something I do want to mention for other people before I, a um, couple things I want to mention before I open the, the line for people. 
if you're not on uh, the newsletter at hawaiihypnosis.org, uh, get on the newsletter. You get a bunch of um, get access to all the podcasts, teleseminars when they're released, uh, four free hypnosis skill building audios, and a free advanced Ericksonian script books from my friend uh, Daniel Jones. Also, when you go to hawaiihypnosis.org, if you scroll down on the right hand side, there's a donation box. We have a friend, um, Leo Gopal from South Africa. Many of you have probably already donated. If you're from HypnoThoughts or you've seen my post on Facebook, you probably donated. Just go there. Any money you can donate would be greatly appreciated. His mom is had been going through some really heavy um, uh, diabetic comas, and they are working on getting her to a specialist. And we're only, I think, maybe $500 away. We've raised close to $4,000 in like a week and a half. So I mean, I was surprised that we got it that fast. But it shows that hypnosis community is a very tight-knit community. And the one last thing I would like to mention, I have a new website where I, this is something I've been wanting to do for a very long time because I'm a huge uh, hypnosis nerd, much like many of you on the call probably. <laughs> I um, have a new website, it's hypnosisproductreviews.com. That's hypnosis-product-reviews.com. And with that, I like Steve had just said with his um, latest project, he hasn't even created the first email. I've just set the website up in the past couple weeks, and when you subscribe, you'll be getting 12 free hypnosis products. It's one for every month that you're on the newsletter. I'm going to talk to Steve about possibly getting something from him, maybe a PDF or whatever. Definitely, you'll be getting 12 free products throughout the year, and I'll be reviewing products. Soon, I'm going to be reviewing Igor Ledohovsky's self-hypnosis program, just because I love talking hypnosis. If there's anything else you would like to mention, feel free or forever forever hold your peace. <laughs> uh, well, you can go to Learn Hypnosis Nashville if you want to check out one of my upcoming trainings. Uh, that's going to be expanding here pretty soon. I'm moving beyond Nashville. I have plans to do, uh, actually maybe coming to your neck of the woods we talked about. Um, I don't know how many woods are actually in Hawaii, but... <laughs> Not too many. Maybe coming there anyway. Not too many. That's okay. Uh, maybe coming to your neck of the beach. Um, but, uh, yeah, Learn Hypnosis Nashville is, uh, is my training site. Uh, for now, again, that's about to expand and change quite a bit, uh, especially since I've come back with uh, the conversational hypnosis licensing. Well, if anybody wants to learn conversational hypnosis, I actually... Uh, I'm one of the 24 licensed trainers for him now, and I've got a training coming up at the end of January. Uh, it's going to be six days. In fact, I'm going to do basically what Igor did in, in uh, Long Beach. I'm going to do six days with the final day of uh, pain management uh, because I have several doctors here in town that are interested in going through my training. <coughs> that will be quite interesting. And uh, uh, even my, my training is about to shift dramatically. Um uh, yeah, hypno, hypnobizcoaching.com and uh, nashvillehypnosis.com. Otherwise, if you guys have any questions, I'm open to uh, do my best to answer and uh, see where we go from here. On December 7th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Igor Ledohovsky will be having a free teleseminar. And during this teleseminar, one lucky person will win a free 64 gigabyte iPad 2 fully loaded with over $4,000 in hypnosis training materials. To register for the teleseminar, go to bit.ly forward slash hypnosis contest. Okay, so if anybody has any questions, just uh, fire away. Especially, especially I'm, I'm just about to finish my hypnotherapy qualifications, and I've actually got a... a um, of going to a seminar by seeing Michael Andrews um, on the weekend just just to try and okay. boost my confidence with the inductions. Um, Great. Um, one of the things that, that that baffled me is 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 how do you go about finding a space to to run your business like an office space or something? Oh, great question. Uh, you know, go out and find. Uh, where are you? I'm in Adelaide, Australia. Yeah, in Adelaide. Okay. Uh, do you have like uh, uh, health centers there? Uh, you know, look for like chiropractors, physical therapists, uh, people that are already 
working in, in a complementary medicine, uh, complementary uh, right, okay. care, and oh, see if they have it. Blown up. Well, see, see if they have an extra office space open. Uh, one thing that I did, uh, it, it's really interesting. I, I was having a chat with Igor one day, and he and I have so many parallels in our business uh, because I used to work in a physical therapist office, and what I did was I paid her by the session. And she was happy to get the money because she didn't have anybody using the office. And I think I paid her maybe 20, 25 bucks a session. So it was a little bit of a revenue share situation. And if my clients didn't show up, she was kind enough not to charge me for anything. Uh, some days I had to pay okay. her quite a bit. But, you know, we also set, uh, we set a monthly cap on it. So if, if I reached, you know, like $500 a month, then the rest of my sessions were, were just on me, and I got to use the office for free after that. Uh, okay. But, yeah, you know, there's, there's some office spaces that, uh, that actually rent out by the day uh, or half day and things like that. But uh, I think the best way to do it is go out and, and find, you know, somebody that, especially if it's somebody you already know, uh, go out to uh, networking events where, where these people hang out, like here in Nashville, we have a magazine uh, that, that has all these complimentary people in it, natural, natural paths and things like that. And they have a, a monthly meeting, a uh, networking meeting. And the first place I went was to one of those. I met a chiropractor and ended up working out of the back of his office. And that was the first office I had in Nashville. And, okay. Uh, you know, so, so just go out and network and find a space that people are not using already that, that they, you know, you can, you can help them out. They can help you out and everybody benefits in the end. Plus, if you connect with some of those people that already have a clientele built up, then they can start marketing you to their clientele. Okay. Yeah, that, 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 that makes a lot, of, a lot of sense. I've had other people suggest that as well. Yeah, and, you know, find somebody who's successful already and use, use their network. Uh, you know, say, look, I'm in your office. If I, make, if I have more clients come in, then I get to pay you more for using your office space. So why not send out an email and let your clients know that I'm here? Mm, that's a good idea, too, yeah. That sounds good. Steve. Um, Any other questions? Oh, yep, I've yes. got somebody here. They um, they're typing to me. They their microphone isn't working. This okay. person actually, this will help me too. Uh, Randy, uh, I believe the name is Booker from uh, Minnesota, wants to know what do you suggest uh, specifically for small town marketing. Small town marketing. Well, just go out and meet people. Um, you know, small towns words word spreads pretty quickly. You know, but again, make sure you've got the skills to, to bring to the table. Uh, you can build up a reputation very quickly. And, you know, the thing is about small towns is we're connected everywhere with the Internet now. And, you know, those people may be emailing their friends if you're doing good work, and you may end up with, with clients from the next small town. Uh, but, you know, again, get out of network. Get out and shake some hands. Hand out some business cards. Um, you know, put a T-shirt on with your name on it. <laughs> Ask me for free <laughs> hypnosis or something, uh, and go to some of the, go to some social events. Because uh, again, word spreads quickly in small towns. I know because when I was in Murray, Kentucky, it spread very quickly up there. Have, you, I ever done, very, have you ever 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 done hypnosessions out in the out in the in the general public as a way of generating business? Uh, I've done things out in public. I don't typically do session work out in public. Uh, I've I don't, done. I mean, more well, state stuff, yeah. Sorry. I mean, like like doing some doing some some stage work out in the public. Uh, I haven't done any stage work, but it's a great way to get your name out there. You know, you can be you can stand in front of a hundred people within minutes uh, and show them that you have the skills to do it. It was never really my thing. I was always having more fun working with individuals. Uh, but it's a great way to get your name out there. It's a great way to make money if that's the way you want to go about it. Uh, you know, stage hypnotists can make, you know, $1,000, $3,000 in an hour uh, if, if that's the route you want to take. My goal is to work more on the therapy side, and uh, I didn't want to be associated with, uh, with the stage work. But, you know, uh, I've had a lot of friends that have built up tremendous businesses simply because they've gone out and done stage hypnosis. 
So, you know, I, again, I think it depends on the clientele you're looking for. And, uh, but yeah, it's uh, definitely a good way to market yourself. Mm, thanks for that. I appreciate it. Sure. This is uh, Keith from Richmond. Hey, hey. Hey, I, I wanted to ask, uh, uh, I, when I looked at your website while we were talking, um, about uh, online calendars so that your clients can book their own sessions. Uh, I know a lot of people that do it. I'm not a big fan of it. I like to talk to my clients before they come in. Okay, and so you're doing that before the contact beforehand. Sure. I like to know who I'm, who's going to be walking in the door because if I get a feeling from them over the phone, they're not somebody I want to work with, then I'm going to save both of us time. Uh, because, you know, if, you know, sometimes people call in, they have, uh, they may not have the right attitude. Uh, and if they book a session, you don't know who's walking in the door. If they book it online. Uh, so I, I, I like to pre-screen my people before they walk in the door. I want to know that they're coming in because they really want some change and not because they want me to make them change. Uh, you know, because you're much, much more likely to be successful that way. So I do everything I can to set myself up for success. That's why, I've, you know, that's why I've got 95 testimonials on there right now. Uh, because I set myself up for success as, you know, as much as possible. But, yeah, okay. you know, it's uh, it's entirely what you want to do with it. Uh, that's just my perspective on it. I know other people that do it, and they're happy with doing it. And, you know, no power to you if it works out for you. Yeah, I thought it, uh, I agree with your uh, with your statement. I do like, uh, I actually do uh, the uh, sort of a mini pre-talk uh, when they call. Exactly. And, uh, and, and close it, but then... Uh, what I was thinking and was that for their, if I'm not actually booking, because this is what has happened, is, uh, uh, well, wait a second, uh, let me check my calendar and I'll book my second and third session. Because I try right. to close them on the, you know, on the paying in advance for all three sessions. Right. Or, or whatever uh, the case may be. You know, if, if you can't get the money, some, something I've started doing actually just in the past few months is uh, I have a confirmation deposit. And uh, this, because uh, every now and then, I don't know about you guys, but I've, I've had people that just didn't show up. And when, you know, when you charge them $100 to set the appointment, they're going to show up. I, I've only had one person in the past three months that didn't. And, you know, I gladly took his money. Uh, I, I don't typically right. like taking money from people I don't do any work for, but, you know, if you schedule my time, then you're going to pay for the time. And it just gave me more time to work on some other things at the moment. But, um, yeah, no, book them, you know, go ahead and book them out if you can and get the money on the phone. Uh, I, I, the way I've got my site set up, you have to go in and you actually have to register. You, know, you guys are welcome to go in and look at my terms and conditions and everything. Uh, if you go to NashvilleHypnosis.com, go to New Clients, and you'll see it on the menu bar. Scroll down to the bottom of it, it'll take you to my Bill of Rights and Terms of Service. And I get down into the nitty-gritty. I mean, you know, to the point where I had a guy come in one time who apparently, uh, I don't remember what it was, he, he, he didn't smell very good. And uh, I actually had to ask him to leave. Uh, you know, and I, I even put that on my website now, the, the, the terms of service that they have to agree to. So I get their name, I get their email address, I get their address, I get their phone number. Everything is, is on the, um, on, on the uh, uh, new client registration page before they even get into my, uh, my intake forms. And it also actually adds them to an email list when they sign up for that. So now I've got my clients on a separate email list, and I can email them, you know, in, in different ways that I'm going to email the people that are not in my email list yet. Because, you know, well, there, there are different levels of people that you're, you've got. You've got, and this is actually, I don't know if this is something that Igor came up with or something that uh, he picked up somewhere else, that you have suspects, prospects, clients, and regulars. You know, suspects are people that haven't actually done anything. They don't even know that you're really there sometimes. Uh, those are the people you're trying to find. Prospects are people that know that you're there. They want something from you, but they haven't given you any money yet. 
A client is somebody who's already given you money. And a regular is somebody who gives you money on a regular basis and hopefully gets into your system and starts, you know, getting the bigger programs that you put together as you build, uh, you build your practice and get bigger in what you do. Um, but, you know, getting them and separating them on certain email lists is a great way to keep in contact with them specifically, uh, where you can market to people that already know your work. And then you've got a, another list of marketing to people that don't know your work yet. Um, but, you know, like I said, I, I, I've, it seems complex, but I have everything set up to be as simple as possible in the end. So I have to do as little as possible during the day when people walk in the door. Uh, they've got paperwork in hand. Most of them have already paid, and they just sit down and we start working. What would you, uh, would you, um, uh, in either through the internet or, uh, which is probably what I'm thinking, uh, would you send either a video or MP3 pre talk once they have signed up and registered and you spoke to them to save another, uh, you know, 10 or 15 minutes in the office? Well, actually, I thought about doing that, and uh, it's interesting you bring that up. I was going to do that uh, next week because uh, I don't have any time this week, but I was going to put uh, a pre-talk on the same page as my intake forms. So once they're in, they watch the video, they download the paperwork, and then, you know, getting some of the basic stuff out of the way. Uh, I, I spend very little time on a pre-talk anyway when people come in, uh, you know, as far as getting over the fears and silly stuff like that. Uh, I, I I pretty much get straight into the work and we start doing, you know, I'm, I'm starting to embed suggestions and working with some mind-bending language and, you know, getting them to realize some things that they didn't even know were going on uh, so they start to understand the power of their unconscious mind already and what it's doing for them. But, yeah, no, it's a great idea. It's a great idea. Okay, good. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Steve, uh, real quick, I'm gonna. Someone wants to ask you what you think about print and radio ads. Print and radio. Well, um, I think print really it depends on where you are. You know, uh, that that's where you have to get in and do your market research, decide who you want to work with and where their eyeballs are going. Uh, because if you've got a newspaper in town that nobody reads, then I wouldn't waste any time on it. If you're somebody who's wanting to work with, you know, kids and helping them get over bedwetting, then, yeah, I think it would be a great idea to market in, you know, in a parenting magazine or something like that. Uh, you know, one thing that, uh, that we, we learned while we were in Mexico was to go look at uh, National Enquirer. And I know it's, it's such a ridiculous rag, but... Uh, those guys make more money than, than anybody in, in the writing industry uh, as far as paper goes. Uh, and they're doing it because they're, they're selling a lot of papers. But you can learn a lot from, from co about copywriting, about uh, you know, uh, headlines and things like that from reading those things. Cosmo is a great way to get, uh, get headline information as well. Uh, but radio... I've done some radio. Uh, I've been interviewed, things like that. Didn't really get much uh, much out of it, but I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. So, you know, I, I think it depends on where you are and demographic that you're, you're marketing to. But with radio, you know, you're looking at repetition, and sometimes the repetition of radio can get a little expensive if you're working on a budget. Hey, Steve. Who is this? This is Matthew. Hey, Matthew. How are you? I'm doing great, and I'm delighted to be here. Um, I just wanted to get on and let everyone know that you are the bomb diggity, and uh, <laughs> that what you're doing, just, just so people know, I just spent the last two and a half weeks with Steve down in Mexico, and I'm leading trainings myself out in the San Francisco Bay Area, but Steve, out of uh, so many of us there, has this background of experience in knowing exactly what it takes to build a practice to have it thrive. And, Steve, I, I got on late. Did you talk about even just how many smokers you've, you've helped uh, kick their habit? No, actually, I, I hadn't even mentioned it. <laughs> I think it's impressive. Uh, how many smokers have you, just even that alone is amazing. Uh, it's over 1,400 now. Over 1,400 people you've helped quit smoking. Now, 
not only is that amazing just for the sheer numbers, but God, that's got to feel amazing. Got to feel great to know you've done that. Yeah, it, it does feel good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then to really highlight the marketing that's gone behind that to get that's just with smoking, but fourteen hundred people through your office. Um, yeah. I teach marketing and sales. I know a lot of this stuff, and I'm going to jump on your call. Um, I think twenty-seven dollars is a steal for your time. Uh, for what you're going to be able to share. So I just want to put it out to anyone who's looking at doing this. Uh, Steve is going to walk you through the steps, and he's, if you can't tell already in this call, he gives. He really, there's nothing getting hidden and um, to give you all the secrets to build your practice, and he knows it specifically over, what is it now, 10 years you've been doing it, Steve? Uh, well, I've been studying hypnosis for 12 years now and uh -huh. in professional practice for a little over eight. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so I just uh, couldn't let people go without knowing that uh, what you're offering, people should really get get involved with. I appreciate that. You, you know some of my story too. I mean, I uh, I slept on a guy's couch. I slept in the back of my pickup truck for a while. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah, and I really if, hear if, if I build up, yeah, if I, if I could build up the business I built up and I did that, then anybody can do. You know, it's just a matter of perseverance and keeping that dream alive. And what I hear is that you want to help people really shave off those years of having to scrape by and actually get thriving, get abundant right away. Absolutely, yeah. Because yeah. you know the thing is, the more successful, the more successful, good hypnotist we have out there, uh, the 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 more this industry is going to grow in and of itself. You know, as, as we start putting quality people out there, and, and Matthew is, is one of the, actually Ma Matthew is, is one of the uh, the licensed conversation hypnosis trainers as well. Uh, and you know, I, I I I appreciate you know what you said about me, but I'd have to say you know the same thing about you, Matthew. Is he's uh, we became pretty good friends out there and got to know each other. Uh, you know what he's doing, and, and you know how he's building. He's teaching people how to build their practices as well. So, you know, coming from somebody who's been doing this for a while, I really appreciate that. But, uh, yeah, you know, we need good quality people out there that are doing good work. And I think I've stressed that a lot over the past 90 minutes. Uh, you know, you've got to have the skills before you can go out there and, and, and you know, really change the world. Uh, but that comes down to good teaching and, and a lot of practice. Definitely, and thank you for what you're contributing to the community. Absolutely. Thanks for jumping on here. Very cool. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks, Matt. That was definitely a definitely good uh, plug for his uh, material. <laughs> it's all oh, genuine. Really. I'm not getting on. I don't, I'm not getting a cut on any of this. It's because uh, I yeah. really believe what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea you were even on here, so, uh, yeah. yeah. Thanks for, thanks for those kind words. But I, I really do. I just I, I want to see people, you know, do something with this work. I, I want to see hypnosis really explode out there and become more of what it can be instead of what it has been. You know, I, I look at this work just like chiropractic medicine 25, 30 years ago, you know, when people would go out and say, oh, you're going to get your back cracked and you're going to, you know, they make all the jokes about it. But you look around and there's a chiropractor on every street corner now. And... I'd like to see the same thing uh, happen with hypnotists. We need to be everywhere because the more of us that are out there doing good work, the more people are going to come in. And there's such an abundance of people out there that need this help. So I encourage you all to find somebody who you know, knows what they're doing to teach you how to do this if you're not already so confident in it. And if you are so confident in it, go out and find somebody else that can teach you even more because that's, you know, that's imperative. This is Matthew again. Okay. Steve, I'm wondering how you set up your scheduling in terms of when you see clients versus when you take the uh, calls that people are inquiring in and how long you spend on the calls with them when they do call in. Well, I try to spend as little time as possible, but I want to get a good feel from them. Um, basically, I'm in the office. My clients, so I start seeing clients at 9 a.m. on Tuesday. And I see clients typically from 9 to 6, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and then 9 to noon on Saturday. Uh, I call people between sessions. And, uh, you know, I always book after a first time client, I'll book out an hour and a half. And it never takes that long. 
but uh, and, and then I'll spend that next few minutes returning phone calls that that called during that hour. So I try not to let them hang, you know, too long uh, as far as waiting for me to return their phone call. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just try to do it throughout the day. Now, and, and you know, I, I've thought about hiring an assistant, but you know, assistants don't always know what you do. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, it's hard for them to answer questions for you. It's easy for them to book a session for you and take care of that, but if I wanted to do that, I would already have, you know, like uh, like we were talking about a few minutes ago, actually having, uh, you know, an online schedule system set up. So I just take the time that I have in between clients and make the, make the calls, and typically by about 6.30 in the evening, I'm finished with all the calls for the day, all my clients for the day, mm -hmm. and uh, then I move on to whatever else I need to do. And, and so sometimes I'll just schedule. People? Go ahead. Uh, you schedule people in an hour and a half chunks throughout the nine to six time slot. Uh, well, the initial clients you get an hour and a half. Uh, returning clients get get an hour, and they they never stick around that long. Usually, I'm typically done within forty five minutes for returning clients. Okay. So I've always got a ten or fifteen minute break between clients. Got it. And, and then you just have an answering them. machine that takes their information and you call them back to... Yeah, everything goes to my voicemail. Yeah, and if, I, if I'm available, then I'll pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, so and always uh, you put, put my website on there so people can go uh, look for any questions or any answers to questions they might have. And um, so, yeah, just I just do it throughout the day. Got it. Like I said, I want, I want to keep it as simple as possible. Mm-hmm. Thanks. I like what. Uh, yes. Uh, this is Keith again. Hey, Keith. Yeah, here, yeah, here in Richmond, uh, Virginia. Uh, uh, I just had a friend of he was a uh, 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 licensed clinical social worker. Mm hmm And they they were signing him up for eight to uh, eight clients a day, uh, mm -hmm. and then he was just relieved of his job because he couldn't keep up with all of the uh, forms and paperwork that uh, an LCSW um, is required to keep. So two things. Do you, you, do you, uh, do you uh, take notes after each session? I take, I take minimal notes, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, you know, when the client comes in, we'll sit down. They've already, they have their paperwork in hand. Hopefully, they've already taken care of that. Uh, right. I'll take a few notes on the back of it, depending on what we're working on. Uh, mostly what I'm writing down, you know, if like a smoker comes in, I'm going to ask them about family. I want to know family names because I'm going to bring their family into sessions. Uh, right. You know, uh, but I, I really take very minimal notes. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah you, I just don't uh, look at do you record your sessions with a, a HD webcam or, or whatever? I, I do video record all sessions with women and children in particular, uh, sometimes with men, uh, but definitely with women and children. Always. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely right, uh, I, I good use, advice. I use, them. I use that, and it's helped me... Um, you know, and, and earlier, what, uh, the couple things that you had said, I don't know how I attract some of the clients that I get. Uh, no. But I don't turn them away, but I certainly had some um, clients maybe that everybody else turned away. <laughs> 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 and I accept them, and I'm glad that I had the, the video running. Yeah, uh, it's always a good idea to have video documentation because uh, you never know what kind of crazy ass people are going to walk in your office. <laughs> right. Especially if you live in Tennessee. <laughs> right. Right, I've met them. Yeah, there are, there are a few interesting folks here. Oh. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's. Go ahead. In 1970, uh, in Athens, uh, it was um, uh, really. Uh, fire on sticks and bats and everything saying cut your hair and now all of the <laughs> things drunken rednecks have long hair and I got this thing saying wash your hair <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that's, that's why I did my paperwork <laughs> <laughs> right better, better be clean before you come in 
Right. But, uh, I'm gonna have to look at that that part in particular. Yeah, go go. Uh, like I said, go check it out. It's uh, it's in there. Um, yeah, you know, but you know, I, I appreciate everybody tuning in tonight. It's um, you know, I hope what I've given you this evening is is, is going to be something that's going to help propel you a little faster in, in your your journey in this in, in building your practice and you know, gathering your clients and the clients are going to be good for you and you're going to be good for them and, and everybody's going to be happy in the end because it. Uh, the more good hypnosis we have out there, the more happy clients we have out there, the more this, this industry itself grows in ways that uh, benefits everybody in the end. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's about all I've got for tonight. <laughs> all right, Steve, thank hey, Johnny, you. Thank you, Steve, thank you. Oh, yeah, thank you, you very much. Like I said, it, it, check out the websites, uh, hypnobiz uh, hypnobizcoaching.com, learnhypnosisnashville.com, and uh, you, you want to check out my private practice site, nationalhypnosis.com. But uh, looking forward to hearing from all you guys later. And one last thing I would like to uh, chime in. I uh, probably should have said sure. this earlier. I have a, um, a bunch of really cool people I'm, re I'm going to be interviewing. It's taken me a while to get a hold of some of the people. Like John, I always mispronounce his name. John Lavelle. Lavelle I got, I'm going to be interviewing him. I've got wow. confirmation. I got confirmation from, uh, of all people, John Overdurf. I cannot wait for that one. Oh, man. Yeah, so definitely. That's subscribe awesome. Subscribe to the newsletter, hawaiihypnosis.org, and you'll be uh, kept in the loop of when all that stuff happens. I'm really looking forward to being able to talk to Overdurf and, um, and try to keep my head above water. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it. Just go for the ride. Uh, it, like, like Bill Hicks said, it's just a ride. It's just a ride. The world is like a ride at an amusement park. And when you choose to go on it, you think it's real, because that's how powerful our minds are. And the ride goes up and down and round and round. It has thrills and chills, and it's very brightly colored, and it's very loud. And it's fun for a while. Some people have been on the ride for a long time, and they begin to question, is this real, or is this just a ride? And other people have remembered, and they come back to us, and they say, hey, don't worry, don't be afraid, ever, because this is just a ride. And we kill those people. <laughs> Shut him up. We have a lot invested in this ride. Shut him up. Look at my furrows of worry. Look at my big bank account and my family. This has to be real. It's just a ride. But we always kill those good guys who try and tell us that. You ever notice that? And let the demons run amok? But it doesn't matter because it's just a ride. And we can change it anytime we want. It's only a choice. No effort, no work, no job, no savings of money. A choice right now between fear and love. The eyes of fear want you to put bigger locks on your door, buy guns, Close yourself off the eyes of love. Instead, see all of us as one. Here's what we can do to change the world right now to a better ride. Take all that money we spend on weapons and defense each year and instead spend it feeding, clothing, and educating the poor of the world, which it would many times over, not one human being excluded, and we can explore space together, both inner and outer, forever in peace. Thank you very much. You've been great. I hope you enjoyed it.